Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a four day haunted house that actually has two surprise elements to it, a little ghost and a bat. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. If you're a fan of these extreme 3D houses, haunted houses, I have a couple that I've done in the past. I've kind of never, I think, perfected the system, so I keep making them year after year. So I hope you guys like this one. And don't forget to check out Helen's haunted house design. Hers is just a really pretty silhouette against a watercolor looking background. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. Bye. To start this nail, I'm going to begin with a neon gradient of orange and yellow. So I've orange at the tip and then yellow up above near the cuticle area and the silly thing about this is that you almost can't see any of that gradient in the end because the haunted house takes over the entire nail but I really love this gradient and if you were doing this as part of a set you could still do this gradient on the rest but for this nail in particular if you don't want to take the time to sculpt a gradient it's really not necessary just because you can't even see it so that's kind of one of those either way sort of a dealios and after you have that gradient sculpted then I'm going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic just to make sure it is nice and smooth and kind of build it up and get your apex in there that's one thing I've seen so many designs and people's work on Instagram recently I'm certainly not going to name names or anything but I've seen a lot of work that just does not have a stress point in it and that is something that you just kind of have to check on yourself because if you don't have it that could really explain you know if you have problems with clients having broken nails or lifting just make sure that that stress point is on point and now on a nail form backing and I filed that nail into shape by the way but on a nail form backing I'm going to begin sculpting all the different pieces of my haunted house this is a multi-level, multi-section haunted house. So there are a lot of different pieces to it. It also is multiply 4D. And because of that, there's just a lot, a lot of little pieces to make. And it's if you've never done a type of 4D design like this where you build things up and make structures and have side pieces and bottoms and blah, 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 blah don't try it with this one. Make this one something that you do later and kind of work your way up to it because with all of these different little pieces to try to get them to all line up properly and work in the end, there's just so much going on and so many little minute measurements that could make a difference that until you have some experience under your belt with this type of a design, I wouldn't begin with this one. So to make these different little pieces, you can sketch and you can make a drawing first if especially if you're less experienced than I am with this type of a design you may definitely need to make a template for yourself first and you can even say trace on your phone the designs and the shapes that I made for your template if that works for you I mean that could be an option if you just pause the video and if you can see through it well enough to trace them on a piece of paper that could be your template otherwise you can make one yourself I know that at least for me in elementary school at one point we had to you know draw cubes and different things flattened and that knowledge from fourth grade or whatever it was can come into play here if that's something that you know you've ever done before and so make all your different little pieces the first floor of my haunted house is that first kind of a squared off u-shape kind of an upside down u-shape and that's going the space that i left open is for my doorway and then i have four sides so you don't have to worry about the fifth side or you know the back side of each section it's actually the sixth i don't know i said fifth but the sixth wall is your nail so you don't have to do that for any of these but then for that second story i have a little chimney sculpted in so that gives you a whole new section of pieces to make and that chimney is vital for the 40 element of this design where the pumpkin comes up because the wire goes through the chimney so that piece you can't kind of ignore so now you have to make extra walls for your chimney so not only do you have to make those side walls for the major part of the second floor but you also gotta do those little extra pieces on the side then I'm also going to make a couple little side towers for my for my haunted house. So I've got those two shapes and those I'll just glue in later. Those don't need to have those side spacers. That's not a necessary piece for those in particular. And with my bright, bright green acrylic, I'm also going to sculpt the door. So you have all these different elements and to sculpt them all at once is just sort of a process. And if you don't if you don't know in the beginning what shapes you're going for and what you want your haunted house to look like, it probably is not going to go that well for you. So definitely have a game plan going into it for this design and know that it's going to be time consuming. This nail is one of the longest times I've, or the most amount of time I've ever spent on a single nail before, especially one that I didn't sculpt on an actual finger. It's just, it's so intensive and there's just so much 
going on and so many little pieces and details that you don't even realize you need to make until all of a sudden you're like, hey, wait a minute, I'm missing something. So just, yeah, plan ahead is all I'm trying to get at here. But now we're going to begin assembling and you're going to want to start with the first floor of your haunted house and glue all of the side pieces to that front panel. And as you're gluing these in place, as you can see, I'm using two tweezers to help me out. Everything is so tiny and fingers are just cumbersome. So if you have a couple tweezers to use, definitely use those. There was a couple days where I lost my offset tweezers and that thing is like the best tool ever for this type of thing, but obviously regular tweezers work too. But then after you have all of those pieces all assembled, then you can glue that to the nail as your starter. And then once you have that little first piece done, then you can glue that bottom piece of your haunted house to the tip of the nail. And I like to do that sometimes after it's glued to the nail so that it kind of can sit over the free edge. And now with purple acrylic, I'm going to begin filling everything in, adding some extra gap fillers and securing everything, making sure it's nice and super strong and smooth and perfect. And this step is one of the most important steps to making these designs because if you don't fill in all of those little cracks and grooves, it's going to just fall apart. You're going to sneeze and it's just going to go bloop, bloop and it's going to fall off all over the place. So make sure that you do take the time to secure everything together after each step. So now after you have that part done, I'm going to glue my little towers in, kind of tuck them in behind that. So I didn't fill in right at the top with the acrylic because so you want to leave that part until after you have the towers in place. So secure those towers in and then use some acrylic all around them to make sure that they're not going to fall off either. And if you want to, depending on how thin your towers are, you can flip the nail over and apply some clear acrylic to the back of them as well. And then after you have that part all done, then you can start assembling the second floor of your haunted house. So I'm going to glue those side pieces in just like I did for the first one, knowing that I have to glue the side pieces of my uh, chimney and the rest of the haunted house. And now before you actually glue that on, you're going to want to sculpt your little ghosty on a nail form backing. So the little ghosty gets assembled before you glue that upper story on. And then take a piece of wire and bend it so it's got a very small U on the end of it. So just take a, I'm using just uh, nail clippers, and then glue your ghosty to the end of the U and then fit that in the nail. So you want the long part of the U to go up through the chimney and have enough space below the window for your ghost to hide. So that little section there is actually very technical and you have to get it right. And then after you have that, you're going to glue the edges of the second story to the nail without getting any glue on your ghost or the wire. So glue that all down, hold it in place until it sets up and make sure that you don't get your ghosty glued. So keep track of him and make sure he's still loose. And then with more of your other color of acrylic for your second story, so I use kind of like a berry red, I'm going to like I said, secure everything together. Same thing though, as you're doing this, just kind of keep an eye on the ghost to make sure that he doesn't get any acrylic on either the ghost or the wire because that's gonna do the same thing where it's going to make him immobile. And the whole idea with this design is that there's all kinds of moving pieces. And so as you're securing everything together, you just periodically pull on that wire to make sure the ghost still moves. See, I just did, I was like, okay, let's make sure he's still good. And now we get to sculpt the roof. So I wanna bring in some more of that really bright green color because it's one of my favorites and I want my roofs to be all that neon green. So I've got three sections of roof, two that are small to go on either side of the chimney. So I'm gonna glue those in place first. And then after I have those glued, then you can do the longer section on the side of the house that has no chimney. So trim off any extra if you need to. A little manicure scissors actually will cut these thin pieces of acrylic very easily and you'll get really nice crisp lines. And then once again, secure everything with more acrylic. It's always so much fun when you're doing a design like this because there's these sections of just the process that you do over and over and over again, like securing this stuff together. And by the end of it, it's just kind of like, oh, I gotta do this again. But then sculpt another piece. And this is to make a clear railing or a widow for a widow's walk that's going to go around, around I can't talk today, that's gonna go around the top of the first floor. So you're just doing clear pieces. You need one for the front, then two for the sides, and then glue those in place. I think one of the key factors of a haunted house is there's just so much going on and there's so many little creepy elements that it just kind of overwhelms you. So now with my e-file, I'm going to carve two little indents in the doorway of the first floor. So just take your e-file, and this is real time, so you can see how slowly I carve these little indents in place. Just kind of tap your e-file 
into the places where you want those and then you can dust it and then cut off a very tiny piece of a super thin piece of wire and put two beads on your on your little piece of wire so string those beads into it and then set that little piece of wire with the beads onto the nail so that the beads are resting in the grooves of your doorway and then after you have that in place take and just tap some nail glue on the wire to hold it in place and then you can go through and I'm going to secure those little pieces of wire with some purple acrylic. And as you can see, every once in a while you see something you have to fix and I just went and I touched up a little bit of the upper floor. But add some purple acrylic over the top of that, kind of blend it out if you need to, and just sort of secure it and mask the wire all in one step. So you're making sure it's not gonna fall off while keeping it purple because otherwise the wire showed up as being so silver. And then tap a little bit of nail glue onto your little pieces of the bead onto your little beads and then set the door on top of that so now we're going to make a little bat that's going to be a little surprise that's in the doorway or in the door if he's going to fly out when you open the door so with black acrylic sculpt your bat and as you can see a, sculpting a bat is just a lot of kind of little loop-de-loop -loop shapes or little curve shapes so just kind of manipulate it but then all of a sudden your acrylic will start to grab and then it'll go really quick then glue a piece of wire to the back of your little bat and then you can slide your bat in through the doorway my doorway did not want to stay open it was really fighting me during this process so slide your bat in place inside the doorway and then you're going to take and you're going to cut off the extra wire if there is any and then glue a bead to the end of that wire and then glue a bead to the end of the wire of your ghost too. I just did both the beads at one time so that it was easier, I guess, because it really, that's just so you have something to grip. It isn't anything too necessary, especially on the ghost, because he's stuck in there. He's not coming out. And now that you have all of that sculpting done, first thing, pat yourself on the back because I know that was a lot of work because this design is intense. And then you get to go through and do all of your acrylic painting. And to do this, I would really recommend I'm kind of having a game plan in my mind again just so that you don't hop back and forth between colors and stuff too much and add even more you know precious time to this design so I like to take and the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get all of my windows in place on my design with some white paint and I didn't want my windows to be white in the end I wanted them to be yellow but if you were to go straight onto the design with yellow, at least if your yellow is like mine, it's not really that opaque. And having a white base underneath it is going to make the white or the yellow just look so much more intense and bright. But now that I have that done, I've got that white paint done, I can dry. I'm going to switch to some black acrylic paint that I've diluted slightly. I'm going to be adding all of the details onto my house as far as like brick patterning goes. And a haunted house to me just needs to be brick. It just looks best if it's got that texture on it. So the first thing to do to paint those bricks is just to make some horizontal lines, a bunch of them straight across each section of the house. So just make line, line, line. And then after you have those lines done, almost randomly place in little vertical lines, splitting it up into brick shapes. And doing that, you know, it's kind of random but that also kind of has a pattern you don't want to do any that are like one right on top of each other you want to stagger them but you also want to try to keep your bricks similarly shaped so you don't want to do it just completely random but you want to look sort of random so it takes a little bit of thought process to make them spaced correctly but once you have it in and you kind of painted that pattern a couple times and it goes super fast it looks like it would be a really time consuming process to paint all those bricks in but it's not too bad and then like i said i was going to paint over my windows with the yellow paint and having that white base, as you can see, makes my yellow look so almost highlighter bright, which goes with my background color really nicely. And you do get to see that background color just a little bit on the edges of the nail, as well as through that upper window and the upper floor, because you can see there's nothing behind it. So you can see right in there. And then you can add some panes to your windows, outline them if you'd like to. That's optional because it is such a contrast between like the purples and the yellow. You don't necessarily need to outline them it's up to you and then finish off the bottom floor of the house or the lower floor with all of those brick shapes too doing this little bit of painting like i said this whole design was just so time consuming i would say it was easily five hours that i spent on this one particular nail just with all the different processes and dry time and everything it was a good chunk of time it was about two hours a couple different days and then i work on my nails over the course of a few days so 
yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of time. I hope you guys love it though, because I have been wanting to do an extreme haunted house. I've done a couple of them and I've never really been happy with them, but this one, this one I think is the one that really fulfilled my vision, I guess you could say. If you want to see my past haunted houses though, definitely check them out. I'll put links to them in the description box below. The other thing you have to do is you have to add the little face to your ghosty. And because I didn't do that beforehand, you have to pull him up into the window and paint his face through the window. And then you want to add the actual different spokes of the fence that are around the widow's walk. And to do that, I wanted it to have outlines. And instead of going through and outlining each little bit, it works really well for something like this to paint a wide base shape with black. And then after that, you can go through and fill it in. So after you have all of that black done, then you're going to switch over to your white paint and you can do the white spokes inside that. But you're also going to want to take the white and do the little bits of detail on your ghosty. So you gotta do his eyes and then a little bit of detailing on his wings to make him look extra ghost-like. And you can't obviously do back black outlines on a black bat. So you have to do white outlines on a black bat. But then like I said, fill in the different parts of your fence with white, leaving a thin little black outline and that'll let that black show through. So you've get, you get that black outline still without doing nearly as much tiny little work. And then with some really neon green gel polish, I'm going to go over my white. It's the same concept as the yellow, just make it really bright. And then apply some gel sealer over the background, what little shows and over your fence. Cure that and then apply matte top coat over the rest of the haunted house and it's done. This design has so many different elements to it. That little surprise pop-up ghost is one of my favorite things as far as haunted house elements I've ever done. And then you have that little peekaboo bat too. So there's just a couple different things to play around with. If you do decide to do a recreation, definitely share any of them with me on um, Instagram and Facebook because I would love to see them and I will see you next time. Bye.